All right, so I've always wanted to ask someone else this question that I get all the time. So what's it like carrying the Earnhardt name? Oh, man, it's uh... – I mean, I'm not telling you anything, but I want you know, to hear him. I know. It's, tell it, me. Tell him. <laughs> tell me. It, it's uh, I mean, it's awesome. You know what Paul Odell has built, and then you know you and Daddy and um, the whole family's continue to, do to carry on that legacy. You know that that's what means the most to me, and, and seeing how much it means to other people. You know, yeah. it's it's incredible. You see fans. I mean, hell, this past weekend, uh, I was just hanging out at the track, but I ran into a lady that I ran to last year, and she just bawled like uh, like crazy whenever I walked up and hugged her and wow. she did the same thing this weekend mm -hmm. so you know that that that, that speaks she just, volumes she and broke just, down crying oh big time and uh you know that that's cool to see and it you know just that 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 to me is is what makes our last name so special and and, and knowing you know what it means to other people it, I mean it, it's kind of mind-blowing really yeah has it ever been a challenge ever been hard uh to you know <laughs> yeah for real i mean the obviously you know ex expectations are high and people automatically assume just because your last name you're gonna win races and unfortunately wins don't come that easy yeah. but you know it it's i feel like you know because you grow up in it you kind of understand how to channel that pressure and not let it sit on your shoulders and, and i feel like i've been able to handle that pretty well and and know that you know I'm I'm cutting my own path. You know I'm right. I'm not you. I'm not Paul Odell. Well, um, has anyone ever used that line that we hear? You just are where you are because of Earnhardt, regardless uh, of any type of success, <laughs> whether you know hunting, whatever. Yeah. Oh, you're just an Earnhardt. That's how you got that opportunity. Every day. Every, Every day? day. I mean, you hear it all the time, you know. And, and you know it's haters, but at yeah. the end of the day, that that don't matter. You Do know? you respond to it? Nah, not really. I mean, you know, it, it, it is what it is. You know, it's pe people are going to say what they want, but until they know the real story, it's, you know, it's just what their, their thoughts are. Did that yeah. ever bother you? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, you hear it all the time. Um, even after I retired, I still hear that I rode my dad's coattails all the way through my career. Um, it's frustrating because, you know, just like Jeffrey, um, he's had to work and, and, and there's times when he's had to sacrifice and, you know, do things differently than maybe his dad would have done or, or Papa Dale would have done. Um, I just got used to saying Papa Dale. Cause <laughs> it rolled off the tongue. Well, You're pretty good. <laughs> I tell you, we have this picture in the house, and that's what Isla, That's what we tell Isla. Gotcha. You know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, I'm getting more used to saying that. But um, it can be frustrating. But, yeah, you just got to remember, and I, I know that Jeffrey does this because we get a lot of practice that you just think about what you're doing. Think about what you're in control of and how, you know, remind yourself of what you've done to be where you are, and that, that makes you proud. And how did you get started in racing? Like, what was the first thing you ever drove? Uh, my first race car was a Yugo. It's uh, Yeah. Was that in a... As everyone's as a, is, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, where, where Renee, my stepmom's from in... Virginia, uh, right? Virginia, Row Retreat, Virginia. There's this big half-mile dirt track, high bank, freaking badass place to race um with raceway they started this this uh this series where you could be i think 12 to 18 and, and race and I, I was 12 years old and i was and whenever they announced they were gonna do the series and i was like man this is great i want to I go race and I, I begged daddy for two years to let me go race he's like no 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 finally he said all right you go get sponsors in a car and i'll let you race and there was family friends that had companies up there, uh, Mark IV, Honda and Suzuki, uh, Tam Toppin, the owner. He had a car sitting there for sale. It was a Yugo. Had a roll cage in it. Oh. It just needed a seat and seat, seat belts and, you know, good to go race. So he, he agreed. He said, all right, you know, I, I, got, I got the car and I'll help fund it. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to need some more sponsors. So, you know, see what, what else you can find. And I went to and another. maybe a couple counts of horsepower. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we, 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 weren't, we weren't worried about horsepower at the time. We are just worried about getting on the track. But uh, um, went to another friend, Jim Hilton, owned uh, Cedar Springs Fish Farm, Cedar Springs, Cedar Springs Sportsman Lodge right there in uh, Speedwell, Virginia. Has, uh, I, you know spent many summers up there you know staying at his house getting up in the mornings going and stocking the creeks with trout and hanging out on his farm he had a big 500 acre farm so um i went to him i was like man like you know would you be interested in doing something like this and he's like he's like shoot yeah you know he'd already sponsored some other cars up at the dirt track so um i went to daddy i was like all right i got two good sponsors and a race car and he's like well like all right i guess you can go race you know so um me and renee's dad richard went hard at it getting the car ready i think we picked the car up on tuesday and had it ready to race on saturday so yeah um 
and that's kind of how it all started and from there you know work our way up through the different <laughs> series on dirt you know to street stops, a lot of dirt models yeah I did uh did like three years on dirt and then went to uh asphalt uh, late models limited late models at motor Moss speedway and uh then you know after a year there signed the deal with dei to do k and n and um did two years there and uh had that opportunity and kind of the i did what it did and uh you know then i was kind of stuck trying to figure out what what my next plan was and you know it was a lot of hard work but ended up getting back in in racing in a truck and, and worked my way up through trucks xfinity and uh ran some cup races and now here we are with you ran upcoming. overseas a couple years ago I did, I in did. the nascar euro series that was pretty wild that was cool what that was, was that like it, it was that different was brands hatch brands which hatch. is a uh one of my sort of bucket list racetracks i'd love to man run a lap at it's awesome it, it's a really cool place um obviously you know the nascar euro series it's uh it's similar to like the the pinty series up, yep. in, up in canada the cars are um you know basically a stock car chassis um but but really cool to get the opportunity to go over there and race against some some guys that are just excellent road course racers uh i didn't didn't have that great of a finish i think we ended up finishing seventh but that's um, not too bad nah uh, i mean I, first I guess, time yeah i guess going against a bunch of professional they ran many many laps at that racetrack too <laughs> it was it was pretty cool though it was yeah cool did, did, through that whole trajectory was there anything you wish you would have done differently uh, on the euro thing or no, oh, not the euro. just I'm the just whole back to the start with the, the hugo you got any regrets uh I, the one thing I, I wish I'd have done different was appreciate what I had more when I was at DEI. Yeah, mm. you know, and that I was young and I wasn't. I was stupid, you know. What I didn't understand what I had. Yeah, and you know, I thought the streets were paved with gold, man. I was like, man, it's a walk in the park. And uh, and when DEI fell apart, I realized it wasn't. And, and I probably, I, I wish I'd have done things different. But at the same time, you know, I feel like that also made me understand, you know, hard work and, yeah. and how how these opportunities don't come easy and, and you know i've not had the best opportunities in the past but I, i've i've appreciated every one of them because it's not easy to get a, get a ride out there yeah i agree i think that um, i'm glad to hear you say that and i think that the from everything you've been through you couldn't be any better positioned per, uh, personally to succeed because you do uh you going through all those trials and tribulations and to see how hard you work today um and i think all the earnhardt fans out there have to appreciate um you doing it your way.